Hey guys, if you have seen one of my previous posts about recovering from injury, this applies to what I have done recently to my ankle. Basically, a week ago, I sprained my ankle and now had to go through my process on curing and healing it as quickly as I can since I'm in season and I don't want to be out of playing for too long. So I want to share my tips and tricks to healing ankles and these poor things can help you progress in an injury in a short period of time if you do it properly, obviously. And these are certain things that some people may not tell you to do. So I hope these tricks are very insightful for you when it comes to ankle injuries. Depending on the severity of the injury, the first thing you want to do is to not let it get stiff. That is, I think, one thing that many people don't realize because when you take off your shoe, it swells up. Many people say to not take it off because they want you to continue to play, which is not the best advice. But again, it just depends on how badly you rolled your ankle. So when it comes to taking off your shoe and now seeing it kind of slowly get bigger and bigger, again, you don't want it to get stiff. What I do is you want to kind of massage the area. I'm not talking about deep tissue. I'm talking about rubbing the area with a little bit of pressure to increase blood flow to keep the ankle loose. When you rub out the ankle, it increases blood flow and it keeps the mobility within your ankle so you're more likely able to walk on it after you have rolled your ankle. Depending on how poorly you rolled your ankle, obviously maybe walking on it isn't the best. As if, if maybe you broke your ankle and you heard a snap or felt it, then not the best to walk on it, obviously. But if you feel a little bit of a tear or you heard something or whatever else, Walking on it isn't the worst thing, maybe not the best thing either, but it just depends on how badly you did roll your ankle. So again, take off the shoe, massage the area out, and move your foot up and down. Not so much that it causes pain, but to a point where you feel pain and then back off. You want to try to activate the muscles that you just hurt because you stretched them and now they're weak and sensitive. So if you move in the range that you're able to without pain and consciously activate those muscles, then they're not gonna be as sore as you think they would be. And after that, you're able to slowly walk on it. And when you get home, these are the next steps to take. First thing to do, if it's really swollen, ice it. Ice it, elevate it, try to reduce the swelling, but ice for about 20 25 minutes and have something that's able to go around the whole ankle a lot of ice packs don't do that so the best thing you can do is get frozen peas because that can actually surround the whole ankle instead of having little parts of your ankle get ice on it basically after you have iced your ankle for 20 25 minutes then you're gonna want to apply heat and applying heat is going to increase blood flow to the area and that's what you want when you want to enhance the healing process because without the blood flow, then your little tendons can't really connect back to each other and heal quickly. Once you have put heat on the ankle for 10, 15, 20 minutes, however long, not too long, then this is where you get a massage oil, CBD cream, anything that is good for massage because then you want to rub out the area. And I know this sounds really counterproductive, but what it does, again, it increases the blood flow and what it helps is enhance the mobility, again, in your ankle. Obviously, you don't want to push super deep into it like a deep tissue but you want to massage the area so it loosens up the fascia or the connective tissue around your muscles so you can increase your mobility and strength after you have massaged your ankle for about 10 15 minutes 
all around the joints and everything, that's where you want to now strengthen it a little bit more than before. So you want to, again, point your toes up and down as much as you can, full range to the point to where you feel some pain, but not too much pain, because you don't want to overstretch those ligaments again. So point your toes as far as you can, bring your toes up as far as you can, and do that for 10 reps. And then again, massage the area, point your toes up and down again, 10 reps, massage the area. You wanna do that kind of process about three times. And then rest your ankle for about one to three hours. You wanna rest your ankle after doing all that because now that's the time for it to actually go through the process of having the fibers connect again. You increase the blood flow, you increase the range of motion, you've loosened up the tissue so you can increase the range of motion. So now when you rest and you have your foot elevated and you're sitting there watching TV or whatever, it now gives your ankle that chance to be still and connect those fibers again. But after resting for about one to three hours, you wanna do that whole process I just said again because you don't want your ankle to become stiff again. So as time goes by and those tissues are connecting again, you want to ice it if it's still swollen, apply heat, massage with CBD cream or massage oil, and then mobility again. And you wanna do this process religiously. I personally do this whole process as much as I can throughout the day. So for an example, right in the morning, I do this process and then rest it for about one to three hours while I'm studying. And whenever I need a study break, then again, I do it. I do this whole process I just told you. And again, study <laughs> for one to three hours, do it again. And the more mobility and strength you feel, then you can progress to more challenging exercises to gain your strength back and mobility back. So instead of just body weight, pointing your toes up and down, then you get a band, wrap the band around the sole of your foot. Again, point your toes up and down against the band, push hard into the band while you're pulling, then slowly point your toes up and you wanna activate all those muscles within these exercises. While you're doing all of these little tricks I've taught you, you're going to see a lot of differences in your ankle. When the injury first happens, you're not gonna see a lot of swelling, but next day, you're gonna see a lot of swelling because as you sleep, that's where all the inflammation comes in. So your job is to now decrease the inflammation while increasing your range of motion and some strength within your ankle. And while you sleep, you should sleep with your foot elevated to reduce the inflammation process. <laughs> because when your foot's inflamed, it's gonna reduce your range of motion and cause some pain. So you wanna reduce all of that as quickly as you can and as often as you can while still resting enough to let the little fibers connect again in your ankle. I sprained my ankle about a week ago and the physio I saw said I would be out from four to six weeks. It has been one week and I'm feeling a lot better. I can walk upstairs. I can have a little pep in my step. I haven't tried running yet because I'm not there yet, but that's in a week from doing everything I just told you. It would take from four to six weeks if I wasn't as determined and dedicated in my rehab. If I did it once a day, then obviously it's gonna take a lot longer, but the more determined you are to heal quickly and if you do the right things, sleep well, eat well, your physiotherapy, all this stuff, then your healing process is gonna be a lot quicker. This is a lot of information to take in. So read below the steps that I do to heal ankles quickly. If you have any questions about any other body parts, any other injuries, DM me, comment below, and I will answer you to the best of my ability.